Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is kneel. Let's take a moment to look at some of the definitions of this verb. The first way you're likely to hear kneel used is to mean to be in a position in which one's body is supported by one or both knees. The second definition or the second way this verb gets used is to mean to get in the position in which one's body is supported by one or both knees. So uh, the, the main uh, usages for this particular verb um, are, are either telling us um, we are presently uh, or are already in the position where our body is being supported by our knees, um, or um, we're encouraging maybe someone to get in that particular position. It's rather interesting, but kneel can be both a regular verb and an irregular verb. To make the progressive form of this verb, all you need to do is add ing to the base verb to form kneeling. The uh, regular and irregular come into our past tense and participle forms. Okay? So for our regular verb, uh, we could just add ed and form kneeled. Uh, and you might notice as I say that I'm making a d sound. The reason for that is the letter L or the L sound at the end of our base verb is a voiced uh, sound. So that's why I'm not adding an extra syllable as I say it. So it should just sound like this, kneeled. Okay? But what's more common to hear is actually the irregular form. And that is knelt, K-N-E-L-T. And you might be asking yourself, well, how do I know or which one should I use? Historically, knelt, the irregular form, was, was far more common. And I would say in, in more formal settings, you're still more likely to see this. So if I were writing uh, something for a class, uh, maybe writing something at work, again, in a more professional type of setting, then I would use that irregular form of the verb, okay? But uh, amongst friends, uh, in uh, more informal types of communication, like text messaging, it's probably okay to use this regular form of the verb, okay? And, and so um, whether you treat it as regular, right, you would use kneeled as both the past tense and the participle, or you would use knelt, the irregular, again, as past and participle. Now, the verb kneel uh, does come up with a few phrasal verbs. Uh, we're going to look at two today, but each have uh, a couple different meanings. So the first one we'll discuss is kneel before. When someone uses this fra phrasal verb, what they're describing happening is the process of lowering oneself onto one or both knees. Um, usually you're kneeling in front of someone or something. It might be done as a, a signal or a sign of loyalty or respect. So uh, I think if we think about some like older stories, older literature, um, particularly uh, as we describe kings and queens, royalty, that type of uh, it, um, sort of setting, you might be able to picture uh, this action being described. And that's my example sentence here. The soldiers knelt before the queen. So there's a simple past tense sentence, uh, and I'm using the irregular form there. Now, a second way you'll hear kneel before used is to mean to submit to someone or sort of pledge your allegiance. So you're sort of promising that I support you, I'm with you. Uh, that's, that's what's meant by that. So Another example sentence, the hero in this movie kneels before no one. So here, this, is, this person is very independent, so they're not going to submit to someone or they're not going to pledge or promise uh, anything to another person. The next phrasal verb you'll encounter is to kneel down. This can have a couple different meanings. One is just describing that action of lowering oneself onto one or both knees. 
an example of this. They are kneeling down as they pray. This is common in, in many religions. Um, and so we can kind of picture that idea of lowering oneself onto both knees. A second way you'll hear kneel down used is to mean to be in a position of weakness or subservience, right? So it's kind of like someone is superior, right? Subservience would be the lower, lesser uh, person. So an example of this, the Ukrainians haven't knelt down to Russia's attack. Fortunately, there's this uh, ongoing uh, brutal assault and attack uh, on Ukraine, but uh, many people look at the situation and say, well, the Ukrainians are not in a position of weakness, right? They haven't quit. They haven't stopped fighting. Um, so here we have an example of knelt down, but it's being used in the negative, okay? So not a position of weakness. Now, let's continue using our verb kneel in a couple different verb tenses. Today, we're going to practice the imperative and the simple future using will. Let's start with the imperative. You uh, might know this as a command. It's rather unique in English because we are telling someone to do a particular action or maybe not do an action for the negative. What's interesting about the imperative is that we do not have a stated subject. You're probably used to seeing sentences begin with I, you, we, he, she, they. No, we're not doing that in the imperative. The subject is always implied. It's either you singular or you plural, depending upon how many people uh, to whom you are speaking or writing. So an example of an affirmative sentence in uh, it, an affirmative imperative sentence, pardon, would be kneel before the king. So here, uh, maybe somebody is giving this command to other individuals. Right? And again, you might be able to picture this in a movie, um, a, a historical TV show. Uh, again, I, I feel like those are the instances where I've heard this verb used. Now, for some people, it can feel uh, maybe a little too direct, a little too forceful to start a sentence and, and tell someone to do a particular action. So you can always soften it with uh, using the word please either at the beginning or the end of the sentence. Now, you don't need it in both places. Uh, and it's, it's not necessary for all imperative sentences uh, because that could could really weaken someone else's. I mean, perhaps you really do want someone to do a particular action. You're not trying to give them a choice or ask them politely. You're just commanding it. Okay? Now, if you want to make a negative imperative sentence, our structure here is going to be to use do not and then the base verb. You might also hear the contraction don't and then the base verb. So we could imagine maybe some parents telling their children, don't kneel in the mud, right? I don't want mud on your pants, uh, right? That's going to be a mess to clean up, right? So we're giving that command. Now let's talk about the simple future. Today we're going to practice making sentences with will. This is really common um, as people make predictions, what they think is going to happen in the future. It's common when they make offers or promises as well. The nice thing about the simple future and sentences with will is that our structure will be the same no matter what our subject is. So we're going to start with uh, a subject, could be the name, uh, could be a pronoun, right? Then we use will and then uh, our base verb. You can see that in my example. Players will kneel during the national anthem. Okay. This has been a, a source of controversy over the years, uh, but again, hopefully it, it creates a, a mental image for you. You can sort of picture the athlete lowering uh, herself or himself uh, onto one knee. Now, if I want to make a negative simple future sentence, my structure will be to have my subject, then will not, and then the base verb. Here's another example. This character won't kneel down before anyone. So uh, again, we're kind of going back to that meaning of, of being subservient, of being weak, 
uh, and here we're using it again in the negative. Finally, we can ask a yes or no question in the simple future using will. To do this, we start with will, then we have our subject, and then our base verb. Here's another example. Will we kneel during the serv service? Right. So maybe you're um, vis uh, kind of a visitor to a particular religious service. You're attending something and uh, with a friend, a family member, and wanting to know sort of what to expect. So you might ask them to make this type of prediction. Now, let's spend a moment to really just talk about uh, one related word uh, connected to our verb kneel, and that's the noun kneeler. Uh, this noun can be used in two different ways. It might refer to an object that is used for the purposes of, of kneeling on. So I've included a picture. It's in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. This is something you uh, might have seen in uh, churches or, or other um, uh, sort of religious settings. So an example of this. The church purchased new kneelers for the sanctuary, so for their place of worship. Now, a second way to use the noun kneeler is just to refer to a person or group of people who kneel. An example of this, kneelers were criticized heavily by people who saw their actions as a sign of disrespect. So here, um, we don't have a lot of information describing this particular situation, but we know there are a group of people who lowered themselves onto one or both knees and other people were offended by this particular action. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.